Are you going through life at the moment uh, with a lot of confusion and issues in your life that seem to be running out of control and you're not able to really think through things very well and you're getting all kinds of opinions from people and you're not sure which one is, is right for your situation in life and um, are you just kind of thinking about well you know maybe there's something more that I'm not seeing and uh, is there you know, is there really a God? Uh, and what does he think about me and my situation in life? And can he help me? Or is he listening to me? And uh, So, I'm just curious. Uh, I know I have gone through this many years ago. Um, about 29 years ago, 30 years ago. My life had a lot of things that came up uh, that I just could no longer uh, handle on my own and I needed help and there was nobody else in this world that could do that for me so God basically uh, set me down and helped me to see that I needed him so I'd like to share with you some thoughts uh, on this lesson um, I'm going to be reading some thoughts about um, some reasons to become a Christian um, you may be an atheist, or you may be a partial believer. You may not have any belief, but and you may be just curious, which is fine. It's just perfectly fine. I understand exactly uh, where you might be. So I'd like to share with you some thoughts here, and let's get started. It's been 29 years or so since I was called by God and gave my life to Christ, and I can tell you, the Christian life is not an easy, feel-good road. It doesn't come with a benefit package guaranteed to fix all of your problems, at least not this side of heaven. But I would tr wouldn't trade it now for any other path. The benefits far outweigh the challenges. But the only real reason to become a Christian, I can say now, is because you believe with all of your heart that God does exist, that his word, the Bible, is true, and that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, the resurrected Son of God. As he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. John chapter 14 verse 6. I can tell you that becoming a Christian won't make your life easier. In fact, Sometimes it may become harder. Most likely, you won't experience a sea parting miracle every day, yet the Bible does present several very convincing reasons to become a Christian. So I'd like to share with you six life-changing experiences worth considering as reasons to becoming a Christian. The first and the greatest one um, well, one of the greatest ones, at least it was for me, and I think you will find the same thing, is that you will experience the greatest of love. There is no greater demonstration of devotion, no greater sacrifice of love, than to lay down your life for another. John chapter 10 verse 11 says, Greater love has no one than this that he lay down his life for his friends. The Christian faith is built upon this kind of love. Jesus gave his life for us. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners and sinning, Christ died for us. This is what the Holy Spirit tells us in Romans chapter 5, verses 8. And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, we see that once we have realized Christ's deep, unconditional love, nothing can separate us from it. It's amazing. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. 
We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And just as we freely receive Christ's love as his followers, we learn to love like him and spread this love to others. Doesn't that sound wonderful? And it's all free. The next thing we can experience is a spiritual freedom from death itself. Similar to knowing God's love, absolutely nothing compares to the freedom, freedom of a child of God experiences when released from the heaviness, the guilt you're feeling, and the shame caused by the sin that you are involved with. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 says, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. At the moment of salvation, through water baptism, our sins are forgiven or completely washed away. This is in reference to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. And as we read God's word and allow his Holy Spirit to work in our hearts after baptism, we are increasingly set free from sin's power. And not only do we experience freedom through forgiveness of sin and freedom from sin's power over us, we also begin to learn how to forgive others. Isn't that interesting? As we let go of anger, bitterness, and resentment, the chains that held us captive are broken through our own acts of forgiveness. Simply put, John 8 verse 36 expresses it this way, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And this is so true. I know it's hard to see right now, because you may be suffering something very bad but Christ will set you free. The next thing we can experience and a reason to become a Christian is we begin to experience a lasting joy and peace. The freedom we experience in Christ gives birth to lasting joy and abiding peace. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 8 through 9 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. When we experience God's love and forgiveness, Christ becomes the center of our joy. It doesn't seem possible, but even in the midst of great trials, and there will be many. The joy of the Lord bubbles deep within us, and his peace settles over us. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. The next thing we can experience and it's a promise and it happens every time and it's guaranteed we experience finally a true connection with God God sent Jesus his only son so that we could have a relationship with him first John chapter 4 verse 9 says this is how God showed his love among us he sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. 
So because God acted for our behalf, he wants to connect with us in an intimate relationship. He is ever present in our lives. He'll never leave to comfort us, to strengthen us, to listen and to teach. He speaks to us through his word, the Bible, and he leads us by his spirit. Jesus wants to be our closest friend, and he will. This is guaranteed. Doesn't that sound good? The next thing we can experience if and when we become a Christian, is our true potential and purpose. We were created by God and for God. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We were created for worship. Philippians 3, 3 says, For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. The deepest cry of our hearts is to know and worship God. As we develop our relationship with God, he transforms us through the Holy Spirit into the person we were created to be. And as we are changed through His Word, we begin to exercise and develop the gifts God has placed within us. He awakens them. We discover our fullest potential and true spiritual fulfillment as we walk in the purposes and plans that God not only designed for us, but designed us for. There's no earthly accomplishment that compares to this experience. It's wonderful. And finally, we get to experience, that is, one who becomes a Christian, you get to experience an eternity with God. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that says, in short, He has put eternity in our hearts. It is a gift from God. Well, I believe this is the reason we experience an inner longing or emptiness until our spirits are made alive in Christ. I know this is a fact because being an atheist myself before, once I became a Christian, this truth finally was realized and it literally changed my life forever in short order. So, then as a child of God, we receive eternal life as a gift. Romans 6 verse 23. Eternity with God will far exceed any earthly expectation we can begin to imagine about heaven. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. This is uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. So, let me ask you this. Have you, from your love of Jesus, or, or trying to find that you do love Jesus, have you yet appropriated this wonderful gift of forgiveness of sins on your part and obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ to have the hope of eternal life that he offers us out of a pure love on his part? It is quite a simple process once you have been called by God. All one has to do is, first, believe God's Word, the Bible. Then you need to repent of your sins, understand your sin, and that it separates you from God, by beginning to turn around in your life. This is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, it may be a process, it may take a little time, but at least 
one needs to be making that decision and make a turn and at some point realize you're not going to turn back to your old ways. And then the third thing you need to do is you need to confess Christ as the Son of God. That you believe that He is the Son of God. That He died on the cross to pay for your sin. That your sin put Him on the cross and He died for those shedding His blood for, for you. And then finally, in this process, you need to be baptized in water for the gift of the remission of your past sins of all of your life before every single one of them and through baptism receive the gift from God his Holy Spirit in your newly cleansed soul at this point your soul will be completely cleansed and you will be white as snow in the moment you have obeyed God's Word by truly obeying these conditions in his plan of redemption you are instantly a son of God, a new citizen of God's kingdom with Christ as your king of his church. Isn't that the good news? I hope this has helped you and helped you to center a little bit more of your thoughts and give you some confidence and some understanding and some faith. Uh, please keep studying the word, study the gospel, and I pray that you obey the gospel and become a disciple of Christ and that you are set free truly. Thank you for your time and, and God bless.